Spoiler alert, are you ready for a behind the scenes look at the latest episode? Make sure you're all caught up on the new season of I Am Jazz. How'd it go? Went well. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What'd she ask you? I talked about like how like, you know, my confidence has increased and mental, physical alignment, all those things. Um, I did talk about the complication that occurred though. I said how like basically everything unraveled and that it was too tight, so the stitches came apart and then I had to go back no. in for another OR appointment. I told you not to do that. <sighs> we don't want to scare people. No, it was just in the moment I like, I don't think it's too big of a deal. Sometimes you do give a little bit too much information. And this is coming from the woman who threw the farewell to penis party. But like, you like to get a graphic and show pictures to people that don't necessarily ask to see the pictures. But I worry about giving too much information um, with respect to Jazz's surgery because of the complication. And I don't want other families of trans youth or other trans youth to be afraid that this is gonna happen to them. Um, it was a rare complication that you had and we try to help people with our show. The reason we do the show and let people into our lives is to see it's okay and it's okay to have the surgery and it helps you. And in Jazz's case, there was a setback and that doesn't necessarily say to the public, oh yeah, this is something you should do and it's great and wonderful because in the beginning it wasn't so great and wonderful for you. Yeah. Ultimately it turned out okay, but while people are watching the show and get to that episode, they might think the worst. So I'm trying to preempt that and speak to people ahead of time and get the word out. Yeah, Jazz had a complication, but she's okay now. And just follow our journey, follow it through and don't be like, oh, you know, and the episode where she has to go back in for the second surgery. Like, don't freak out. Yeah. A lot of transgender leaders have made it clear that what's between their legs is no one else's business and it doesn't matter and they don't disclose any information about their surgical experience. However, with me, I just feel like it's such a part of my journey and it, everything has been leading up to it. People know that I'm getting the surgery. I want to share those details with people so that they can know what I experienced and what I went through because what happened happened and we've been open and honest from the beginning. Even though it is something scary and it could scare some other transgender youth out there, that's not our intention. I'm hoping that by sharing my experience, they could see that no matter how big the complication is, they could persevere through anything. He said he's five minutes away. He's five minutes away. Ooh, excitement. So the bus pulls up right over here. What are you gonna do? What do you gonna mean? go running up to him? Like they do in The Bachelorette and Bachelor, where they wrap their legs around? No. <laughs> I'm not gonna do anything dramatic. And I think if I jumped on him, he would fall over. <laughs> Not only is my relationship with Amir my first relationship, but it's also a long distance relationship, which makes it 10 times harder. Long distance requires a lot of commitment. You really have to stick to that person. And I, you know, I'm not the type of person who's gonna go out and be with other people. Like I'm not very, I don't date like that, but still it's hard not having someone who you're in a relationship with by your side. They're literally on the other side of the country and it just makes communication more difficult, especially since I don't like texting that much. I think there's a lot of miscommunication that occurs with texting. So I just, it, it's hard. It's really hard. To be a lot of credit. I wouldn't want my first relationship to be long distance. Mm -hmm. Jazz, take one, Mark. What I was really looking for was something super comfortable because that's like the priority. Me with bras, I don't have the best relationship with bras. Like every time I've tried them on, I'm just like, oh, this doesn't feel good. I don't like this. I have to wear this all day. That stinks. Well, at the bra campaign, Amir was there and he was doing nothing really. But every time during my breaks, I would cuddle under the blanket with him. I remember that. Yes. It was kind of awkward. Well, that's because there was a whole bunch of other people around. Yeah. <laughs> it, just, it was weird. It was a little out of place there because the, the bra campaign was really cool, but I think all of the people working on it were women except for one. So he was like one of the very few males even in the room and there were like dozens of people working on this. How did he feel about being one of the few guys? I don't know. I think he thought it was cool being there. He had never been to something like that and I don't think he was thinking about 
how many women were there or that he was the only guy. He just was happy to be there. Good. I Am Jazz features open and honest discussions about LGBTQ plus issues. To learn how you could further these meaningful conversations with your loved ones, head to tlcme.com slash LGBTQ resources.